Well, hello, friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here, and welcome to my basement. I think later I'll tell you a bit more about why I happen to be down here where the light is poor, but I'd like to talk to you guys about a Highland Scott. So today we're going to talk about our 10-year-old. Uh, this is this has been discontinued, uh, but I was able to find it, and I think you might be able to too. So I think it's worth talking and sharing a few thoughts on um, on this humble entrance dram. This is Avalor 10. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me through the opener. Um, as I said, I'll share a little more about where I am and why I am here, but we're in the basement where the light is poor, but the scotch is still pretty good. Uh, this is Avalor 10. Uh, if you're a, a follower of the channel, you know that I recently reviewed a number of X uh, sherried scotches, right? I, I did uh, the Avalor 12, I did Gunfarkless 12, uh, and then of course, um, Vendronic 12, I can't remember what else was in that line, but there was a few, I should have thrown a Macallan in there, just, just for comparison. I, I tend to think they're a little overpriced, but they have some decent scotch. Anyways, um, during that time, I was talking to, in the Whiskey Novice, uh, I think also did maybe Ablor 12, and pulled out a 10 and talked about the 10, and I remembered that I actually really, uh, well, in the past, I, 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 Ablor 10 was a go-to and yet I haven't had it on the shelf for a long time. So I went looking for it. And uh, where I could find it, it was priced higher than the 12-year-old, which made no sense whatsoever. But I kept looking. And I found this on clearance. So now I've paid less than the 12, so I can have it. But let's see what the whiskey tells us. You know, I used to think Avalor 10 was only X-Sherry. Uh, you know, some first fill, some second fill. Young, at 10 years, but only X-Sherry. It says right on the bottle that actually it has some X-Bourbon in it. And I did a little more research online, and it looks like uh, it's got first fill X bourbon, so nice fresh X bourbon, and then X Oloroso sherry specifically. It doesn't say first, second fill, so I imagine it's a mix of both. Uh, it's only 40%, which is too bad. And since uh, nowhere on it does it talk about coloring, at least not for me, not for these old eyes, I have to assume it's colored. Which is too bad, because obviously uh, we like to find a little higher ABV, no filtration, and no coloring. But we'll see what the whiskey itself tells us. This is Avalor 10, X Sherry, X Bourbon. This nose has some uh, nice fruits, some nice spicing. Yeah, I like the fruit in this. It's fairly dark, pretty thick. So, you know, kind of raisin, uh, fig. It's still reddish, but but more just kind of a thick fruit. It's also sweet, not candied sugar or confectionery sugar, but sweet like maybe a little bit of honey. And the spicing is a little closer to um, clove cinnamon, somewhere in between that, between the darker clove and the brighter cinnamon. Hmm, but I like it. Clearly, uh, sherry comes on the nose for me. Um, yep, absolutely. Let's see what the palate's like. Slancha. This palette is also a little deeper, a little darker for me. It's, um, you know, like a, like a Christmas cake or a plum pudding or... You know, something that's got a little bit of um, malt to it, and then, you know, some, some cooked or candied fruits, and a little bit of spicing in there. Yeah, They're kind of a Christmas cake. The early finish is a little bitter. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, in fact, if I were to say that this has youth, and it does, for me, it's not the alcohol bloom. It's, it's the little bit of astringency or bitterness that I hope to see fade with a little more time and some good oak. Let's try it again. I 
Yeah. So I think this is a great scotch. Um, of course, it's entrance. As I said, it's a little astringent, a little bitter. Um, the depth of fruiting doesn't go on and on and on. But the nose is intriguing. The palate is tasty. And the finish is, you know, coying into dark oak, coying into a little bit of wood. Um, and a little bit of leatherness to the, to the fruits or tobacco, like just a little bit. Not a lot. Oh, there might be a little bit of citrus in here too. But it's really cooked down, like an orange, not a bright, sharp lemon or fresh lemon. It's more like, like the whole thing tastes a little bit muted, a little bit cooked. The only freshness comes from a little bit of honey, maybe. That's how I would say. So, you know, uh, this is not terribly complicated. This is not going to change your mind or blow your world away. But if uh, you can find it on clearance, like I did, for, uh, you know, 10, 15 bucks less than the 12-year-old, I think it's a phenomenal deal. This is a great scotch. Um, and it's affordable, which I am always looking for. It really only gets up to about maybe three and a half, but I can enjoy it more sometimes. Some of that orange peel comes out a little bit and, and it pushes into that, you know, three and three quarter, just heading almost to four. Doesn't quite get there. I like it. I thought a, a, a fair comparison dram might be um, this Glandronic 10 year old. Now I know this is only available in Canada, but you know, it's X Sherry. Now it's full X Sherry. There's no X bourbon in here and it's 43% and it's not filtered and not colored. So it's checking a lot more boxes. Uh, the, the X uh, Sherry, I believe is different. I think this is Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, this is exclusively Pedro Jimenez instead of Oloroso. But 10 year old to 10 year old, uh, had to pay a little more for the Glendronic, I must say, but uh, we'll see how it compares. Yeah, the fruits are a little richer. Better clear my palate. Yeah, even though this was dark, and I was thinking, you know, this is dark fruit. This is um, thicker even. Brighter, sweeter. Almost a grape. No, oh, now it's cooked down again, thick. Oh, interesting. In comparison, in comparison, I'm getting a little more of the X bourbon in here. And that, in this case, is a little bit of fresh toffee or caramel. And this is all fruit for me. All right, see how this one tastes. Let's launch it again. Mmm. Okay, palette significantly different. This is the lightly oaky, dark fruit. There's no spice really, so it's quite smooth. Coating, but there's more, more going on in the palate. It's a little chewier. Oh, that finishes nice and dry. Hmm. I don't remember liking that ten-year-old as much. Let's try this. Have a little 10. Yeah, honeyer, sweeter. Uh, as I said, maybe toffee. A little more cinnamon. Still tasty. A little more malt, actually. Uh, a little more... Yeah. Yeah, a little, little more malt. A little more cereal, which I'm okay with. <laughs> Interesting comparison. So I actually, in this sitting, and it's so interesting to me how different sittings release uh, different tastings for me. The Glendronic 10 over here, only uh, Peter Hammond has, uh, is a better gram. Uh, so this has got to sit around four stars. Um, and I know I like the 12 year old even more. So interesting. This uh, Avalor 10, um, I think I'm in the minority here, but I actually like it more than the 12 year old. The 12 year old has brighter, fresher fruits. Absolutely. Like uh, more, more jam, more uh, strawberry, raspberry type fruits. These definitely are more muted, more cooked, more kind of orange and, and, that, and that kind of thing. So definitely less fruit, but I wish I had an ex-bourbon to compare it and talk to you, like just a straight ex-bourbon because both of these clearly are leaning on their ex-sherry goodness. And this Avalor 10 is a good value. If you're in the Edmonton area, 
DM me, I'll tell you where they have it on clearance, which is great uh, because it puts it, uh, like I said, $10, $15 less than a 12-year-old, which is its sweet spot. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, here in the basement. I guess I should talk a little bit about, I, I think, ah, man, I, I, I've been thinking this. I don't know if I shared it with you, but, you know, I, I'm down here because it's just too hard to find time. With everyone home, uh, you know, learning or working online, really hard to find time on the kitchen table. So I thought, i got to set up something in the basement. The problem in the basement is light or even anything interesting. So I took a note from Quig and, and put a few... Uh, Put a few uh, whiskey tubes, although I recycle mine, so I don't keep them. I had just enough to fill in the corners. Put a couple of bottles, just uh, conversation pieces maybe, uh, and hope that we can still have a good conversation. Because ultimately, I want the setting not to take away from what we're talking about. But I love the comments, and I love to just talk to whiskey. Anyways, thanks for joining me here in the basement. Uh, I hope it was okay, uh, at least bright enough for you to see what was going on, and uh, let me know what you think. If you've had Avalor 10, specifically what you think of it compared to the 12 would be a pretty cool conversation, um, or how you think it sets up against other, you know, fairly entrance trams. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a great week.